Hi class! So in this lesson, we're going to learn about the structure and function of molecules known as proteins. Now you might already have heard of the term protein as something that is an important component of a healthy diet. But do you know what proteins actually are? That's what you're going to learn today. So proteins are molecules that are called polymers. A polymer is any molecule that is made up of individual building blocks that are linked together in these repeating units. So this whole repeating unit is called a polymer. And those individual building blocks are called monomers. Now the monomers that make up proteins are called amino acids. So each of these little individual circles represent an amino acid. And then when they are linked together into a polymer, that is called either a polypeptide or a protein. And later on, I'll distinguish the difference between when I would use the term polypeptide and when I will use the term protein. But before we talk about more details, let's get an overview of what you will learn. So first, we'll talk about the amino acid structure, then how amino acids are linked together, then how the proteins fold and unfold and the different levels of protein structure. Then very important concept of the relationship between protein structure and function. And finally, you'll get a little overview of the different types of functions of proteins in living organisms. All right, so first let's talk about the structure of a typical amino acid. Remember, amino acids are the monomers, the building blocks of proteins. Now on one end of an amino acid, you have the amino group. An amino group is made up of a nitrogen with two hydrogens. Then on the other end is the carboxyl group. Carboxyl group is made up of a carbon with a double bonded oxygen and an OH. In the middle, we have the alpha carbon, or the central carbon, which links together the amino group and the carboxyl group. On one end of it, it also has a hydrogen, and then on the other end is the very important R group, also called the variable group. The variable group, as the name suggests, varies among different amino acids. So all amino acids have the amino group, the alpha carbon, and the carboxyl group. This is the same for all amino acids. But the different amino acids will have different variable groups. And what um, atom or groups of atoms you have here as the variable group will determine the function of the amino acid and its properties. So here I just shown you a picture of some different types of variable groups. So this amino acid simply has just a hydrogen as its variable group. This one has a much bigger variable group composed of carbons and hydrogens. This one has even a sulfur as part of its variable group. And this amino acid has a pretty complex ring structure as its variable group. So you won't have to memorize the different types of variable groups and their names, but I just at this point I just want you to have an idea that there are different variable groups and what they look like will determine the properties of the amino acid. For example, is it hydrophilic or hydrophobic? And that will become important when we talk about how proteins fold. Multiple amino acids can be linked together to create a polypeptide or protein. And they can be linked together through a reaction known as a condensation reaction. A condensation reaction removes a molecule of water in the making of a bond. And here you can see the process of ha happening with the removal of water from two amino acids to link together the carbon of the carboxyl group and the nitrogen of the amino group. And when they are linked together, that creates a peptide bond. A peptide bond is simply a type of covalent bond that links together two amino acids. And when they are linked together, you get a dipeptide. Once you have three or more amino acids, then it is considered a polypeptide. So a polypeptide is composed of three or more amino acids, all of them linked through a peptide bond between the carboxyl group and the amino group. 
Once a polypeptide chain is made, it takes on a very complex shape to become a protein, such as the one you see in this picture. Now, to describe all of these complex shapes, biologists use what are called four levels of protein structure. And this diagram shows you these four levels. First, we have the primary protein structure. The primary structure is simply the order of amino acids that make up the polypeptide chain. It's the sequence of how these amino acids are linked together. It's not really a structure, just a sequence. Then we have the secondary protein structure. The secondary protein structure is the particular shape that just a segment of the polypeptide chain takes on. So it's not the three-dimensional shape of the entire polypeptide, just a segment of it. And there are two types. One is the alpha helix. The alpha helix is when a segment of the chain starts forming these, this helical structure. The other secondary structure is the beta pleated sheet. The beta pleated sheet is when the chain of amino acids just folds over on itself to become this folded sheet. Okay, so now we move on to the tertiary protein structure. The tertiary structure is the 3D shape of the entire polypeptide chain. So it is how all the different secondary structures fold in on themselves to become this overall globular three-dimensional shape of the protein. And then we have the set quaternary protein structure. The quaternary protein structure is when you have more than one polypeptide chain making up a particular protein. So not all proteins have quaternary structure, only certain ones that are made up of more than one polypeptide chain that interact together to form the fully functional protein. Now, what holds all of these different protein structures together? So the primary structure is held together with the peptide bond. This is a type of covalent bond that links the amino acids together. The secondary structures, the alpha helices and the beta pleated sheets are held together through hydrogen bonding. And then the tertiary structures are held together through many interactions. We have hydrogen bonds between the different variable groups of the amino acids. Some of the amino acids can interact through ionic bonds. So when certain amino acids have either acidic or basic side chains, the variable groups, then they can interact through acid-base interactions, also known as ionic bonds. Van der Waals interactions are also very important in holding uh, the protein shape together. And lastly, disulfide bridges. This is a special type of covalent bond between two sulfurs. So you have two amino acids making up the polypeptide chain that each have a sulfur in their variable group. Then the chain can fold in on itself so that the two sulfurs are across from each other and they form this disulfide bridge. Right, so with, and then quaternary structure, also really similar to tertiary structure. All of these different types of bonds can help to stabilize a quaternary structure. Now, I had promised you that I would explain the difference between a polypeptide and a protein. So here it is. A polypeptide is a chain of three or more amino acids that are linked together. It is not yet folded. So here you see it as a strand of amino acids. Whereas a protein is a polypeptide that has taken on the full three-dimensional shape. So um, the other difference is that a protein can sometimes be made up of just one folded polypeptide chain. And other proteins, the ones with quaternary structure, are made up of two or more folded interacting polypeptide chains. So a protein is either one folded polypeptide or multiple polypeptides. Once I read this analogy that was pretty useful, think of the polypeptide as a straight piece of yarn and a protein as a knitted sweater. It has now taken on a shape. 
chaperonins are structures that all living cells have to um, help them fold proteins. A chaperonin is a very large complex structure that is itself made up of proteins. And here you see um, a picture of it. Here's looking at it straight on and here's looking at it sideways. So when a polypeptide is being made and needs to be folded, it actually goes inside this chamber into a cavity that provides a nice environment for all of the amino acids to form the proper interactions between them, such as the hydrogen bonds and ionic bonds and van der Waals interactions and so on. Now, sometimes proteins can actually unfold and this process is called denaturation. I can also use it as a verb, such as a protein becomes denatured. When I say it becomes denatured, I mean that it unfolds. This can happen at either hot temperatures, at really high temperatures, the hydrogen bonds that hold the protein together can be broken, or in very acidic or basic environments. The acidic or basic environments disrupt the ionic bonds that hold acidic and basic amino acids together. So if we either disrupt the acid-base interactions or the hydrogen bonds, this three-dimensional shape can be lost and the protein unfolds. And this can be very, very dangerous because the shape of the protein is critical to its function.